Hey, welcome back Design Squad and in this Design Tool Tuesday video I'm going to share something of my own creation. The tools I usually use in almost every project and it has to do with let's say design thinking, UX workshops, everything to help me facilitate better sessions with my stakeholders or users. What I tend to observe with let's say coaching and mentoring my let's say junior designers or appraisees is that people don't really know what to do, what actions to take, how to guide the room, handle the sessions and make them productive so that you can get most insights, extract most themes out of the sessions and taking people through certain steps, lowest hanging fruit for any UX designer who wants to facilitate better sessions is to have a framework in place is to have the templates in place, something you can quickly print out, put on walls, apply a shitload of post-it notes. And this is exactly it. I'm gonna share with you just over a dozen, I think it's 12 to 14 different templates, and it's all covering the fundamentals you might you know, ever need when first engaging with a project. As you can see on my screen, I have quite a few templates here. I'm gonna walk you through every single one of them. They're all numbered from zero to three, split across the different workshops you could run. And usually I use a specific template to run a specific workshop where I just combine different templates together. And then I run, you know, like a one big, like maybe half a day workshop to fill in all the gaps, or maybe even repeat with different people, the same activities using the same templates, you know, without fluffing around too much. And so this is a simple stakeholder mapping or what I like to call a player mapping or player roster, where basically you are, if you're new to a project or you're leading UX stream, and you need to map out exactly who's making the decisions, who are the product champion, who are decision makers in general terms, who keep the gates in certain aspects, who you should just engage to inform or keep happy. You can map it out if let's say your product team or stakeholder or your client. Now, next I have an example of one of the initial engagement opportunity mapping. So let's say if this is your very first workshop and you have no idea of what's going on, or you need to get out of the ideas out of the people, you can use this where you're able to map problem areas, existing customer segments, for example, the presumed users, context and observation of what we have to deal with, mapping the opportunities, mapping what you need to do next, what you need to discover, and then you basically facilitate those ideas to be mapped. The next one is a version of the same thing, however, it's more focused on the users and it's basically mapping the existing touch points on their journey and it's usually if you use it with let's say your client or your stakeholders they might just be advocates of what the users are going through and what they are like and so you would use this as a basis as a hypothesis sheet to then validate in your you know up to come user research or even use this in a user research it's really up to you how you want to use it but it provides you with a framework to go a to z and pre-fill different bits which you might need Next is a simple SWOT analysis, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. However, I inverted it because it's usually easier to facilitate and extract the bad stuff first. That's what people cling on to and then cover it up with strengths and opportunities as a next step because it's easier than to base it on bad stuff and say, hey, well, we are actually not that bad. We could improve on this or this, this is what we're doing, which is great, which is outperforming competition. Next, we have a simple empathy map and this is nothing new, I think, to most of the UX designers. This is a perfect template to map out the key bits to relate to the user. So it's, you know, the design thinking 101, basically. If you cannot empathize with your user, well, you can do UX, you can do anything meaningful or desirable for the end user. As well, we have a journey map templates and I have three of them. One is very basic, divided into three different stages. And I usually use this if I don't know what I'm getting into. Maybe I have, you know, a slight idea with maybe three different process steps users take. I might need to divide them into and split them deeper during a workshop when I map it to the end user or stakeholders. And so I usually keep it open. If I know it a bit better, I might use something like which, this, which is second template, which involves the emotional state as well, which I can map and, you know, more specific, smaller steps as well as more graphical representation, which is basically mapping actions, wise insights, pain points, opportunities, stuff like that. And I'm going to make also video series of, 
you know, coaching you how to do experience mapping facilitation specifically. If you want to see it, leave a comment down below, like this video, so I know exactly what you're demanding for that. Now, next is simplified version of the same without just emotional stage. And next, I have a template of where I usually map different tasks and day to day scenarios you just go through. So let's say if you engage with a user and your users are, I don't know, technical analysts or fintech traders or someone who goes through very specific flow and they have 20 years of experience and, you know, they have so many different touch points throughout the day and they might spend four hours just going through thousands of touch points. This could be it because it's going to allow you to empathize exactly what we're going through, but also know their day to day scenarios where you could improve and slot in maybe a new tool or new service or combine those different touch points into one. So you have one cohesive journey. It's very simple, but very effective too. Next is a persona and it's a proto persona. It's a framework where let's say maybe you already done some user research or maybe you're extracting existing knowledge from customer experience, marketing, other stakeholders, and you put out presumed user template you know, which you can then validate and evolve based on your user research, engaging factual users. But to start off with in the discovery, you might want to do some assumptions first or actually presumptions, which are actually based on some sort of the evidence and map that out on this persona template. And the next is basically a, a multiple one of them, because usually you don't have just one persona. If you have just one persona, your scope might be way too narrow and way too, way too limited. And so in the same way, if you want to map out multiples, which is usually the case anyways, this template would cover that. And as a bonus, I added a few of my templates, which I always use in the ideations, especially when coming up with new opportunities and new ideas. And one of the ideation templates is the Design Your Wars competitor. It's basically taking people out of their seats and their usual thinking of, we cannot do this, we cannot see the vision, we don't know where we're headed making them think of themselves as their worst competitor, because they can always think about what other people do better. And so this template provides them with the opportunity to map out everything they would want to be or everything they fear that someone else would do to branch out into different smaller pieces, prioritize that and come up with something which is actually evolutionary and actually innovative. Now, next is how to prioritize those same things. So let's say if you come up with all those crazy ideas, that depends how technical, how complex we are, how specific we are, you can always put them on, let's say the Kano model, which is prioritization, you can even replace these scales and these axes. So let's say here I have value. So it's combined business and user value, low to high as well as complexity, which is the technical implementation. If Dropbox lets me hide this, guess not, but basically low to high complexity. And as you can see, I marked the ideas of what could be easiest to achieve and the highest value, then maybe sort of worthy investment and no thanks, which is basically if it requires too much and it's very low value, why would you do it? So it allows you to in a workshop quickly prioritize different bits, quickly put different ideas and you come up with a plan of how to do it. It's an amazing template. And the last one is the storyboarding. Imagine that you did all that research or that mapping diverged, you converged into different ideas. And now you came up with idea of few different features which you can map out. Well, storyboarding is one of the best ways to do your, you know, UX ideations and put the user research and themes into actual actionable screens, or perhaps at least the new journeys, the new scenarios of how the users would interact with a new feature or new product, the typical split, the typical phrases of a story and mapping out the key screens together with, let's say, stakeholders or even your user, they're going to be buying in immediately and you can actually come up with something you can then go into prototyping or wireframing or you know, whatever you feel like doing or what's most appropriate. And so these are 14 different templates. Again, you're gonna be able to download all of these online right now you can just go there and download and it's big enough to be printed on let's say a three, a two, a one, a zero, I usually print it as large as I can. If you have an access to white printer, it's irreplaceable because you always want to print out if you don't just redraw it on a whiteboard, let's say, you know, do the best you can with the resources you got, because it also might become a bit expensive knowing you know how much the print is like, 
You also should aim to reuse these templates because if you print A0 and it's a massive you know, tree log which went down just to print that out, you might want to just stick the post-it notes instead of writing it with a marker, let's say, and then reuse it workshop to workshop, project to project, and go from there. You're free to download, update, hack it, use it as appropriate. Any attribution is welcome, but not necessary. I hope these templates are actually gonna enhance your experience as a UX facilitator, as a lead, as a senior, as a designer. As per usual, leave a comment down below if you like it. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you next time.